It's a city where anything can happen. So what can go wrong or right as I hit up LA Unscripted? We live in a city with endless things to do, people to meet, and we want to do it all with you. Hi everyone, I'm Dana Devon, and consider LAU your tour guide to all the must-dos and have-to-tries around town. And no matter if you've lived here for years or just moved here, we'll bet there's a few finds that will be new to you too. How's it going, Jenny? Good, how are you? Doing all right. The epiphany for me was uh, I was in advertising for 35 years. This has been a passion of mine forever, and I really, I was planning on doing something with burgers. Regular burger or the fried onion burger? Being laid off, I kind of forced myself to start this business on the sidewalk. A regular double with chili on the side. I live a block away. I used to roll my griddle from my house to the sidewalk over here when I started. I had a couple tables, didn't even have an easy up or anything. And then as the business grew, I was able to get the easy ups. I designed and built these carts to carry our gear out of the, the new van I have here. My original burger is simple, just straight cheese, meat, and bun. I don't even know how to explain it. I just. I just love this burger, you know? you know? I was grinding at home on my own. I just kind of played around with different combinations until I landed where I am today. It was just experimentation at home, and I think that's what makes my burger unique here in LA. Only a three stack today, huh? I don't add sauces to it. I, I pretty much recommend people just kind of try it as is. It's a really, it's got a smoky steak kind of flavor to it. What I've learned since I've started is, uh, A, I was never in the restaurant business prior to this. I had zero restaurant experience, food service experience. And you said no drinks, right, Sam? Yeah. Okay. The community that I've, I've come to know and love, this pop-up community that I've, I've become friends with, has been a tremendous help in helping me educate myself on how to run my pop-up, but also to share and appreciate all the other pop-ups in LA that you know, we've since become friends with. I've just seen a food truck and I passed by it, and ever since then I've been coming by here weekly, <laughs> and I bring my friends by here and they all love it. I think what uh, makes me do this every day is, uh, A, being able to serve a burger that I love, and also my customers. I have fantastic customers that return every week to come get our burgers. I wouldn't trade it for the world. Jesse! From the valley to the ocean, the mountains, the desert, and everything in between, there are so many incredible enclaves to discover in Southern California. So let's see what our Jasmine Simpkins is up to. Hello, my name is Peggy Simonian, and I'm the owner of Lucky Baldwin's Pub. It's originally named after a man called Elijah Baldwin. Uh, his nickname was Lucky. He was a pioneer, came across to San Francisco. He was a gambling man and he won a lot of money. Lucky Baldwin's as an establishment has been in the city of Pasadena for many, many years. Originally it was a sandwich shop. My business partner and I, David Farmworth, we uh, bought the business in 1996. In those days, nobody was really drinking beer. They were more into wine. Uh, so we were the pioneers here of the Belgian beer movement. We did many beer events. We got dressed up uh, as monks, and we've been doing that ever since. In order to get onto our tap list, it's very difficult. We pick and choose who we want to feature. We've got 65 different taps here. I also heard you were knighted, which That's is right. a big deal. It is, it is a very big deal. Uh, in Belgium, they recognize you as somebody that is promoting Belgian beer here outside of Belgium. So uh, in 2015, I was invited to go and get knighted by the brewer's mash star. Well, Peggy, you know I've got to taste some of your world-famous beer since I'm here. I'll be pouring a couple of Belgian beers. The first one being Pirat. 
The second one being Delirium Tremens. Both very popular beers. This is really good. Oh my gosh. It's, and I feel like it goes really good with these dishes. It does. We do cater to a primarily a British food menu. Uh, we serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We serve uh, full English breakfast on the weekends. Uh, with the traditional Irish bacon and English bangers. Our traditional fish and chips. This is our number one seller that everybody comes here for. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. It's made with beer batter. Mm -hmm. Our batter is very crunchy and crisp and the fish is Icelandic cod. It's so good. A lot of people know of Lucky Baldwin's uh, all across the United States and overseas as well. All sorts of people come here to celebrate and to have a good time. So it's just always a good energy here. Okay, so tell us where to go next, because by now you know I am Dana, down to do it all, unscripted, especially if you dare me. There's a really great artisanal perfume culture here on the West Coast that doesn't really exist anywhere else in the States. I'm Christopher Gordon from the Perfumer Studio in Hollywood. Dana, I dare you to make a signature scent. We create the fragrances, and that fragrance can be used in anything from candles to body scents to room sprays. Our goal was to make perfumery accessible to anyone, whether they wanted to become a perfumer themselves or whether they just wanted to create their own signature scent. I accept your dare. I am gonna learn to be a nose just like you, right? I think everyone should have a scent that they like to wear that makes them happy, confident, uh, feel dressed and ready for the day. Mimosa. <laughs> I wanna smell that one. <laughs> No, just like yesterday. <laughs> scent is one of the most powerful senses that we have. And even between people, a person can wear the same fragrance and have it smell different than their best friend because their skin is different, because they may have dry skin. It's a different diet even can affect the smell. You know how in um, a wine tasting, they'll have like something to cleanse your palate? Mm -hmm. Do you have things like that that will cleanse your palate? Really the best thing to do is to smell your own skin where you don't have like. any fragrance on. <laughs> Coffee beans don't really work, they're just another volatile scent. How do we get started? So we get started by choosing one of these base fragrances. Okay. Uh, we've got a selection of feminine, uh, unisex, and masculine fragrances. I definitely think I like sweeter. Okay. Yeah. So I would suggest Central Gourmand. Because I am one. So we write down the formula, but we keep this on file. Okay. So if you fall in love with it, oh, you can always you can come keep... back. We're gonna do 30 drops of that. So Central Gourmand is here. Now when I count, I'm gonna do a very sensual. One. Oh, that's not a drop. Oh, it's not? No. <laughs> what? <laughs> Let's add some of the jasmine. Let's do 12. So we offer a quick two and a half hour Saturday class a couple times a month where people just come in because they want to make a perfume. They've thought about it, they love perfume. After that we have a foundation in perfumery which is geared towards people who want to go into the business. They want to become perfumers. So it's more in depth, it's a few days long. So we give that a little shake, mix the oils in, and now we're going to smell the final creation. The moment of truth! I'm so excited. It smells delicious. It smells amazing. I'm gonna wear this every day. Wear it in good health. Yeah, thank you. Done. Cheers. Oh my God, it was so cool. And we are just getting started. LA Unscripted will be right back. Welcome back to LA Unscripted, everyone. I'm Dana Devon, and we want to know how you live life unscripted. 
I mean, what does that even mean? Well, to us, it's going outside of our comfort zones, discovering new places and meeting people that make SoCal so special. Yeah, so it's gonna be here and then uh, the shading, uh, I'll connect it with the skyline. Mm -hmm. That way it can look like everything's just one piece. The first time that I did a tattoo, it was about uh, 13 years ago. And when I did the first tattoo, I just felt like, man, that's, that's cool, you know, I can put my art on someone, you know? I was actually born in uh, Michoacan, Mexico. Came over here when I was eight. We grew up right here in Pomona, it was a little bit rough. I got into the tattooing industry. I never even, nobody in my family had a, their own business. I remember I tried to apply for jobs around the tattoo shops around the area and nobody would, no, nobody would give me a job. I was just like, I'm just gonna open my own shop. My name is Jose Guijosa, owner of Killer Tattoos. My true passion is doing dire tattoos. I'm about to reveal the championship ring. I became a big uh, Dodger fan. I started decorating the shop with uh, a lot of Dodger banners. Customers started seeing that we love the Dodgers, so they started coming asking for Dodger tattoos. And I've done from just the little LA logo all the way to uh, the whole Dodger Stadium. About eight years ago, I did a Dodger Stadium on uh, one of my friends on the side of the head. That one was super detailed. I remember I finished like at three in the morning. Uh, I posted it on uh, social media, and right away it just went viral, it blew up. I wanted the stadium with some with the piece of LA, because it, it's just, it's home. I didn't grow up in LA, but it, it just, Dodgers is home to me. I saw his Dodger work, and I knew he was the guy who had to do my tattoo. I'm hoping I get to tattoo a Dodger player that's uh, having tattooed no MLB players yet. Hopefully I get to tattoo one. And that's like uh, my dream right now. Oh, well, it's the biggest competition in the world, so everyone brought their A game. It was cool to watch everyone kill it. We're all friends and we've been skiing together since we were kids, so we're all cheering each other on. I mean, this was the first time that skateboarding was part of the Olympics, is that right? Yeah, yeah, correct. And what, what does it mean to you to be one of the first to compete, and not only compete, but win? Uh, it's, it's so huge, but uh, it's just been a long time coming. It's been talked about for so many years, and it just kind of like never got in there, and they finally like kind of decided, oh, we need this in here, bring some, some new eyes to the Olympics, and you know, I think it was cool. A lot of people enjoyed it. I've got great feedback, and yeah, it's time to happen. Skateboarding started in SoCal and you know it's cool to bring back a medal but uh, everybody here is so supportive. Everybody that skates ends up here at some point in their career or their lifetime just because it's the, the mecca of skateboarding. If someone were wanting to start skateboarding, a beginner, maybe like, I don't know, me, what would be some tips for them? Uh, just have fun, take it easy, like enjoy yourself. Let everything happen naturally. When you're pushing yourself, you get hurt or it doesn't work or you're just in your head. You know, you just want to let it happen. Okay, all right, will you show me a couple things? Got you. Let's do it. When you ollie, you're going to want both your feet 90 degree angle. Okay. Facing straight. Then you want your front toes to be like right below the bottom two bolts. And then you're going to want your back foot halfway off your tail. And then you're going to kind of jump. You can jump front foot first, and as soon as your tail hits the ground, you're gonna your whole weight's gonna shift forward. Okay, let's it's see. It's gonna kind of look like that. <laughs> but when you do it all together, kind of slides up. Back foot, hit the tail, jump forward. No. <laughs> okay, ready? Yeah. <laughs> I can't you do it. it. I'm so you got scared. It. You got it. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're not doing an ollie today. It's tomorrow's lesson. It's tomorrow, tomorrow's, tomorrow's lesson. lesson. I got off the ground. I'll take it. She looks pretty comfortable. I give it like an eight out of 10 for her first time. It's super cool to, to bring home a medal and you know, escape from my, my country.
So we were closed for 15 months. So we want all the locals to come through to see it. We're the, the, the gym that you don't know is here. I'm Daniel Ferguson. I'm the director of tour operations for Warner Brothers Studio Tour Hollywood. We do an awesome tour that is broken down into three different sections. We've got discovery, we've got learning, and we've got immersion. With discovery, you're learning a bit about the brothers and innovation and television and movies. With learning, you're actually out on the lot with my tour guides seeing how film and television works, seeing sound stages, seeing backlots, learning about the movie or the film that you love. And the tour is about two and a half hours, and we can put about 14 people per cart, and we just have a good time. My chariot awaits. I can't wait to get on this lovely tour cart and tour this place. So let's go. We've got a friend's experience. So at Stage 48 Script to Screen, we have the actual set from Central Perk. You've got the couch, you've got the set pieces, but we took it a step further. We created a friend's boutique. And from Friends to the Big Bang Theory. Yes. Yeah, so fans can also come and see their set as well. We love getting people really behind the lens, close to the entertainment they love. Being able to sit right there in the middle of the couch or sit in Sheldon's spot even. Yes. I mean, you can't get much closer than that. Whose beautiful gown is this? This is Lady Gaga from A Star Is Born. Oh my gosh. James Cagney on the left, Edward G. Robinson on the right. Is that velvet? So, so amazing. The finale is where we have the immersion part of the tour. So that's the bigger than life graphics. We've got the, the, the photo ops. We've got the selfie elements. We have a bat cave that you can actually go into with Batmobiles. We've got a wizarding world of Harry Potter. It turned blue. You nailed it. You got it right. I got it right. You passed your potions class. I'm a true <laughs> potion maker now. And you could actually hold an, uh, an award. One of the key features of this room is the opportunity to hold a real Academy Award. I just want to thank all of my friends and family, but most importantly, all of you. You fans, I wouldn't be here today without you and without any of you LA Unscripters. It's fresh every day, because every time you take the tour, when you're with the tour guide, you never know what you're going to get. You never know who you're going to see, what you're going to experience. All right, speaking of, we have to take a short break, but hey, why don't you scroll through our Instagram while we're split up? That way, you won't miss us as much. That's right, it's at, at KTLA Unscripted. Go ahead, double tap that post. You know you want to. We love LA. There's just so much to discover, so you'll definitely want to bookmark this. The Valley Relics Museum is a museum and event space based in Van Nuys, California. Our mission is to preserve the local history of the Valley. We have lots of neon, we have cars, we have a free play arcade. Uh, just lots of artifacts, Hollywood memorabilia, really, really amazing, cool, visually impressive stuff that we have from all over the valley and from Los Angeles in general. Ralph, one of the coolest part of this museum, I think, is the cars, and especially the one we're sitting in right now. What is this van? This is a Volkswagen Microbus, which was used in the movie Fast Times at Ridgemont High. This is the actual bus? This is the actual bus. What that is, is a wall of televisions that we rescued from Jack Webb's house. Jack Webb was the producer of Adam 12 and Dragnet. Ralph, this area has a special place in your heart, am I right? It does indeed. My family and I ran and owned the Family Fun Arcade in Granada Hills for nearly 40 years. It became the iconic place that so many people have come back and said to us, it was like cheers of the arcade world. It's a free play arcade that is available for anyone who comes to the museum. This area is curated by Julianne Rehm and she has done a wonderful job of bringing in and displaying memorabilia from the early stages of film in Los Angeles. And a lot of people don't know that the Valley was kind of 
it was a hub for that kind of thing. It was also a hub for a lot of the stars. Uh, Clark Gable, John Wayne lived here, and the valley was kind of their escape from Hollywood. It's important for us to preserve this history because a lot of people don't know how important the San Fernando Valley is, whether it be aerospace, BMX, uh, sound equipment, and really spillover for Hollywood. So much came out of this place, and it really doesn't get the recognition that it deserves. And now, what's cooking with Jess? I'm not one usually for the craft cocktail. I, I'm a rosé girl or maybe a Prosecco in the summer, something like that. But um, this drink I think would be a fun one to make if you have guests over, make a picture of it. A couple of ice cubes I've got at the bottom of my blender. Just to make life easy, I bought already cut up watermelon, but you certainly could cut it up yourself. It kind of reminds me of maybe an agua fresca, right? Which is just kind of a, a water-like texture, but it smells like watermelon. Now to that, I'm gonna add fresh mint. A couple of handfuls. And you don't wanna start it from the beginning with the mint because it'll, it'll get too mixed up. I just want a quick chop of the mint. Tequila, I've got, I like the Casamigos, but I don't really know much about tequila. So, our watermelon mint juice. Oh, this is the hard part, a bunch of lime. Look at this, how pretty. A splash of Perrier. Cheers. That's really good. Okay, that is it for now. Thank you so much for joining us on another adventure around town. What's our next stop? You never know. We'll see you next time.